Hello and welcome to the video. This is Matthew and we're going to look at question one, which is a 30 mark question on the line. So here we're given a diagram, OABC, that's a trapezium, and OA is parallel with CB. The coordinates of O, which is the origin, 0, 0, A, minus 1, 1, and B, 4, 6 are shown in the diagram below. So question one, part A, is worth five marks, and it wants us to calculate the length of OA. Now we have a formula for this in our formula and tables book on page 18. And the formula for the length of a line is this formula here. Square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So now we need to find our x1, y1, or x2, y2, pop them into the formula, and then work out the distance. So you want to say that a is x1, y1, and then o is x2, y2. So then it's the square root of x2 minus x1, which is 0, minus minus 1. That's all squared, plus y2 minus y1, which is going to be 0, minus 1 squared. So 0 minus minus 1 is going to be 0 plus 1. So that's just 1, and 1 squared is obviously just going to be 1. And then 0 minus 1 is just minus 1, and minus 1 squared is also 1. So it's the square root of 1 plus 1, which is equal to the square root of 2. So that's the length of OA. Now let's have a look at part B, and B is also worth 5 marks. So now we need to work out the slope of the line segment OA, and then write down the size of the angle AOC. So we also have a formula for the slope of a line, and that's also on page 18 of our formula and tables book. It's the very first formula on the page, this one here. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We'll stick with the same x1, y1, x2, y2. So y2 minus y1 is 0 minus 1 over x2 minus x1. So that's 0 minus minus 1, which is minus 1 over 1, which is the same thing as just minus 1. So therefore, the slope of the line segment OA is minus 1. And now we need to work out the size of the angle AOC. Now we have a formula for working out the angle between two slopes. So we're going to say that the slope OA is one slope and the slope OC is the other slope. However, we also know that OC is just a straight line, so the slope doesn't really exist. And this is the formula here for this angle between two slopes. But our M2 is going to be zero, so that will just go to zero. And this will also go to zero. So it's just going to be M1 over one, which is the same thing as just M1 basically. So tan theta will be equal to M1. And remember, or m1 was just the slope of the line OA. So now we can say that tan theta is equal to minus 1, where theta is the angle AOC. Now, tan theta is going to be negative in both the second and the fourth quadrants. So we need to work out the value of theta in the second quadrant and also the fourth quadrant. So to work out theta, we're going to say that theta is equal to tan inverse of minus 1. So to work out theta, we're going to say that theta is equal to tan inverse of 1. So that's equal to 45. So 45 is a reference angle. That's going to be theta in the first quadrant. However, remember we said that we had to work it out in the second quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. So to work it out in the second quadrant, it's going to be 180 minus theta. So in our case here, 180 minus 45, and that's equal to 135 degrees. Or in the fourth quadrant, it's going to be 360 minus theta. So 360 minus 45, which is equal to 315. We can see that by looking at the angle that it's an obtuse angle. So that means it's no bigger than 180 degrees, which means that the angle AOC must be equal to 135 degrees. So that's our answer for part B of the question. Now let's have a look at part C, which is worth 10 marks. So here we have to find the equation of the line segment BC, and then hence or otherwise find the coordinates of the point C. So let's look at our formula tables book now for the formula for the equation of a line. It's also on page 18, and it's this formula here. So y minus y1 is equal to m times by x minus x1. So x1, y1 is a coordinate on the on the line, and then m is the slope. So we already have the slope, as we know that bc is parallel with oa, and we should be able to find a point on the line, as we know that b is on the line. So we just pop those points into the formula, and then we should get the equation of our line. So as I said, m is going to be equal to the same slope as oa, so therefore m is equal to minus 1. And a point on the line is going to be b, and we're given the coordinates of b, and that's 4, 6. So I'm going to say that 4 is x1 and 6 is y1. So now let's fill them into the formula. So it's y minus y1. So y minus 6 is equal to m, so minus 1, times by x minus x1, so x minus 4. And multiplying this out, we get y minus 6 is equal to minus x plus 4. And I'm going to move everything over to the left-hand side. So that's going to be x plus y minus 6 minus 4 is equal to 0. And of course, minus 6 minus 4 is minus 10. So it's x plus y minus 10 is equal to 0. Now c is actually on the x-axis, which means the y-coordinate will be 0. So I'm going to put in 0 for y and then solve for x. So that gives me x plus 0 minus 10 is equal to 0. Or in other words, x is equal to 10. So therefore, the coordinate is 10, 0. So that's the answer for part C of the question. And we've got the coordinate of C, 10, 0. Now let's have a look at part D of the question. And part D is worth 5 marks. This says, show that the perpendicular distance from the point O to the line BC is 5 square root of 2 units. Once again, we have a formula for this in the formula and tables book. And this is on page 19. It's the very first formula on the page. So the absolute value of a by x1 plus b by y1 plus c over the square root of a squared plus b squared. So a is the coefficient of x, b is the coefficient of y, and then c is the constant. 
and then x1, y1 is just the coordinate of the point. So x1 is 0, y1 is 0, a is just 1, b is also just 1, and c is minus 10. So the absolute value of a by x1, so 1 by 0, plus b by y1, so that's 1 by 0 again, plus c, which in our case here is minus 10, all over the square root of a squared plus b squared, which here is 1 squared plus 1 squared. So 1 by 0 is just 0, and 1 by 0 again is also just 0, so the top is just the absolute value of minus 10, all over the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is the same thing as the square root of 2. Now the absolute value of minus 10 is just 10, so 10 over the square root of 2, and 10 over the square root of 2, if you put this into the calculator, you'll get 5 square root of 2, and that's what we had to show. So that's the answer for part D. E. Now let's have a look at the final part of the question, part E, which is worth five marks as well. So now here we have to calculate the area of the trapezium OABC. The formula for the area of a trapezium is given by A plus B over two times by H, where A plus B are the two parallel sides, and then H is the perpendicular height. So in our case, now we need to figure out which side is A, which is B, and what the value of H is. So A is gonna be the distance between O and zero, and B will be the distance between B and C. We actually worked out H in part D of the question and we worked out the distance between a and o in the first part of the question so we need to work out the distance between b and c now so our x1 y1 will be 4 6 and our x2 y2 will be 10 0 then popping these into the formula we get the square root of 10 minus 4 squared plus 0 minus 6 squared so popping these into the formula we get the square root of 10 minus 4 squared plus 0 minus 6 squared which is equal to 6 squared plus minus 6 squared which is the same thing as the square root of 36 plus 36 so therefore, BC is equal to the square root of 32, or 6 square root of 2. Now remember, the area of the trapezium was given by A plus B over 2 divided by H, or A and B, so our A was OA, and our B was BC, divided by 2, and then our H was the answer we got in part D of the question. So our AO was square root of 2, plus BC, which is 6 square root of 2, all over 2, times by the perpendicular height, which is 5 square root of 2. So now let's pop this into the calculator and see what we get. So that gives us 35, which means the area of the trapezium is 35 units squared. So that's our answer for part E, the question, which is the final part of the question and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.